Ever since I was a small child, I've been fascinated with space and spaceships. And Jeff, the spaceship Wright, gets to draw spaceships for a living. He gave me some spaceships. That was very kind of him. I also have a model of one of them. Let's explore some filaments by printing spaceships. <laughs> I'm Joel. This is 3D Printing Nerd. SpaceX has nothing on me. During a previous Matter Hackers meetup, Jeff, who goes by Jeff the Starship Wright, came up to me uh, while he had a plate of tacos in his hand, and he, he handed me three spaceships. This sweet red one, this galactic blue one, and this impressive purple spaceship. He draws concept art for a living, so he can do places and he can do spaceships. And his spaceships are some of the coolest things you will ever see. After talking to him a little bit, we exchanged contact information, and not that long ago, he got in contact with me and he sent me the STL for this one, that impressive purple spaceship. And I thought, this is great. I have some filament to test. Let's print some spaceships. For filaments, I've got this stuff. This is the Matter Hackers Build Series filaments. I have some PETG, or some PETG, and I've got some PLA. They sent it over because it's, it's their same filaments that they've had forever, their non-pro series, but they've priced it more competitively and they still provide their same free shipping and support to it, so it's, it's really exciting. And I thought, well, what better way than to really kind of put this filament to the test by printing some spaceships, and I, I I can't wait. Plus, it's got a cool logo. That's a good logo, Matter Hackers. Good job. At first, uh, I thought, well, I'm gonna use my Prusa i3 Mark III because it's, it's here for review, and I need to get a bunch of prints off of it. And it still had that Prusa filament loaded on it, so as a test, I scaled up the spaceship 200%, and I printed it with the Prusa filament, and it's, it's so good. The Prusa filament, is quite amazing, and this spaceship was glorious. And uh, I didn't even realize it, but Jeff actually put 3D PN at the front of the spaceship. It's cool. The close-ups of this really showcase what this filament is able to do. There's no layer lines. I believe I printed this at 0.15 millimeter layers, and I used Prusa defaults within Prusa control, and it just printed it out. Awesome. So this is a good spaceship, but I don't wanna print one spaceship, I wanna print many. So let's change the filament and let's print some spaceships. I'd actually, in all my three plus years of doing this, I'd never played with the Matter Hackers PETG filament. So they, they sent it over for me to play with and I thought, Let's print it out one for one. Let's do a 100% representation of that model. And I used the PET defaults on Prusa control. So the bed was a little too hot for it. Temperature was okay, but I just used defaults because I just wanted to see what happened and then explore from there. It came out good. Uh, PETG filament, uh, after watching Tom's video on it, I realized that it's the G that makes it kind of glossy and transparent. The glycol, I think it is, or glutamine or grasshoppers. It was a G word, I don't exactly remember. Uh, on the 100% model, the 3DPN is a little bit small, so it's understandable that that didn't come out. I used the Prusa i3 Mark III, which means it has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I suppose if I swapped in a 0.25, I could get those letters to show up better. The walls look good, the, the, the organic shapes look good. This is a wonderful spaceship. All right, we've proven the PETG can go one for one. Let's size it up. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop this, Sean. I sized it up 250%, and this is the spaceship that I got. The uh, letters look okay. So PETG has uh, a little bit of stringiness to it, a little bit of hair to it. It's not really apparent on this model by too much, but if I hit this with a heat gun, it would just go away. The sidewalls look good. This was uh, defaults as well. Uh, but when I saw it, I was like, oh no, there is a layer shift right here. Oh, this spaceship is not space worthy. So I was, uh, I was sad. But uh, I thought that perhaps it wasn't a problem with the filament. Perhaps it wasn't a problem with the printer. Perhaps something just happened. And uh, I thought, well, the better way to test that is just to hit print again. Same settings, same printer, same filament. So I hit print again. There is a, a spaceship. And if you look right there, there's no layer shift. So this 
spaceship is space worthy and can be commandeered to explore the galaxy, while this one will sit back in its spaceport uh, as a museum piece so people can remember what's out there in space, defending their space freedoms. Yay! Yay! The Prusa i3 Mark III wasn't the only machine that I wanted to test this out on. I happen to have a Lulzbot Taz 6, and it's outfitted with the Morstruder, which has a nozzle with a 1.2 millimeter bore in it. It's huge. Just say when. And I thought, let's build a big spaceship. Yes. This is cool. It's really dense because you're dealing with a whole bunch of filament. I mean, it's 1.2 millimeter layer width, and at that width, it's just, it's just a, a gob of filament. It's crazy, but it looks wonderful. There are some spots on the model where the infill wasn't enough, and as it's stringing, let's see, I did 0.4 millimeter layer height, and as it's pulling that across the expanse of the five or 10% infill, there's not enough support underneath with the infill. Sometimes there's a little bit of holes, but uh, this was just an experiment and embiggening, and I thought uh, it, uh, it's cool. So my impressions of this model on the TAS-6, I think it looks cool. Uh, you can definitely tell where there are layer seams. I think that the more Struder is a wonderful addition to the TAS-6. I do see some layer inconsistencies that, uh, I don't know, it's not much. It's not much, but it looks like, maybe it's the light. The light is just playing tricks on me, maybe. I love spaceships, this is fun. Ooh, let's see how much it weighs. I stole this from the kitchen. This is an Escali scale. And what I like about it is it can tell me what the weights of things are in grams. Let's look at this one first, 13 grams. So 13 grams at 100% PETG. If we take the one that's 250%, we get 122 grams. And it guesses here, this one right here is 650 grams of PLA filament. Well, that's big. Let's go bigger. And in going bigger, we're gonna need more than one roll of filament. So we're gonna use two spools of Matter Hackers Build Series PLA. Let's set this one aside. We're gonna print it on the Raise 3D N2 Plus. It's gonna take four days of printing. It's going to have two perimeters, four top layers, three bottom layers. It's gonna have an amount of infill that's most likely 10% if I'm remembering correctly. It's 215C on the nozzle, 65C on the bed, and I used magic goo. <laughs> it lifts, it lifts right off. One of the drawbacks of printing with the Raise 3D N2 Plus is that for a machine with such a massive build volume, it doesn't have the ability to automatically change the filament during the printing process. You can pause it, and then you have 60 seconds before it times out, is what I read. But because of the way the head is designed with these channels that the filament goes through, and right before it gets to the extruder motor and the idler bearing, kind of pushing it and sending it on its way. So what you could do is, using some flush cutters, snip at the top, and then just hold the filament and as the head's going around, just kind of push down so the filament goes through that channel and once the gear grabs it, then Bob's your uncle, you're good to go. So that's what I did and I stayed behind to watch the extruder move and to make sure that the filament was coming out correctly and once I saw the yellow filament piling on top of the blue filament, I knew that we were good to go. I now had a full roll on my, uh, on my cloth clothing rod because that's the cool way to hang your filament and I knew that I could just let it continue on its way, which it did. And once it was done, we had a spaceship! That's a spaceship right there. This is the same one as this and this and this and this and this. But it's huge. Um, right off the bat, I'll tell you how much filament it used once I can turn on the scale. And it is 1,210 grams of filament. It's essentially twice the amount of filament as this in this package right here. Let's dive in. All right, scale, you go over here. I think that the Raise 3D N2 Plus did a fine job with this filament. There's a few hairs on it, but again, hitting it with a heat gun is gonna take care of all of that. Uh, the yellow first, the yellow layer adhesion is 
it's decent and it feels strong and it uh, I don't think this is going to come apart on the blue side uh, again this is a nice strong piece the the perimeters are really holding it in place it looks like let's see if you can see that with the lights it looks like the blue filament had some coloration issues coloration discoloration issues it helps if I use the right word I did talk to Dave over at Matter Hackers, and uh, Dave did say that if something like this happens and you're not satisfied with it, you can talk to Matter Hackers and they will they'll take care of you. I personally wasn't worried because while the baby blue and the yellow is a good color, my goal for this spaceship here is to finish it in a way that Bill Duran at Punished Props would be proud of. And I think that would involve some sanding and some sanding and some filler primer and some sanding. Thankfully, I have a few more hours in the day available to me, which means I'll be able to finish more models. And then once it's done, this will be a fine piece of awesome to display, perhaps on my wall, maybe right there. Yeah, these holes bother people, I know, and I'll take care of that soon. I'll get some paint going, or a shelf, or I'll paint a shelf, something like that. All right, well, there we go. We printed spaceships to look at filament, and I think we had a really good time. The Prusa i3 Mark III 3D printer is a great machine so far in testing. And if you'd like one of those, I put a link down in the description. Visiting that link does benefit the channel. The Raise 3D N2 Plus, I think is a highly capable machine. It does have a few issues that I actually called out in my review, but I think as far as the large format printers go, it is highly capable. And if you want one of those yourself, there is a link down in the description that link does benefit the channel. But what about this Build Series filament? Well, the Build Series PLA and the Build Series PETG look to be well-performing materials. I still need to print a temp tower and dial in some settings because that's the proper thing to do. But uh, I can see that it's going to be a filament that I'm going to want to use quite a bit. Again, Matter Hackers does sponsor the channel. I want to make sure I get that out there in the clear. I hope that by seeing the images and video of these models, you can make up your own mind and my opinions are my own. If you do find yourself interested in the Matter Hackers Build Series PLA or PETG, the two filaments that I've tested, you can find links to those down in the description. Those links do provide support for the channel. Well, there we go. Let's call it good. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not and ring that bell to be notified of when... I could, uh, I could build a... I could build a... I could build a spaceship! Is uploaded to the channel. And if you like what we did there and you want to throw me a coffee, there's a link for that down in the description. If you like what we do, consider supporting the channel via patreon.com. There's a link down in the description for that as well. And finally, if you find yourself shopping online, consider visiting the links that are down in the description. Everybody down there is helping to put food on the table. Well, beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five. Wow.